good morning students welcome you all on indias 23 borrowing cost standard so friends today we are going to discuss again one of the important and one of the smallest standard of all the indias which is indias 23 on borrowing cost just to give you a comfort whatever we have read in as 16 accounting standard 16 this standard is, I would say, AS 16, 80% or 75% of AS 16 is in the AS 23. The basic fundamental is same in AS 6 versus in the AS 23. There are some new concepts which we are, all, of course, going to discuss about. But this standard is primarily our old accounting standard 16, right? So on borrowing cost, if I talk about IGAP, it is AS 16. If I talk about INDAS, it is INDAS 23. If I talk about IFRS, it is IAS 23. And now, why this borrowing cost standard is? If someone will tell you borrowing cost, what is the first feeling which came into your mind on this borrowing cost? Is it a asset? Is it a liability? Is it an income or is it an expense? What is the first thing which come into your mind? If I will say, that you know this item is a borrowing cost is it opex is it capex yeah what came in your mind of course expense right expense borrowing cost means cost of borrowing expense right so, sir if it is an expense of course we are aware that expense has to be accrued on an accrual basis in the books of accounts then why this standard is there? So one thing is very clear. This standard gives you a guidance when a borrowing cost should not be treated as an expense. When a borrowing cost should not be recognized as an expense in the profit and loss account. Sir, if it is not an expense, then what it is? It means if you are incurring some expense, there is some outflow. It means this standard talks about capitalization. This standard talks about the situation when a borrowing can be capitalized, right? So friends, borrowing cost can be OPEX, borrowing cost can be CAPEX. Generally, borrowing cost is a cost of borrowing. It's an interest cost. It has to go to the profit and loss account. But there are some situations in which this borrowing cost should be capitalized. And in this standard, in day 23, we are going to discuss about in which situation borrowing cost is going to be capitalized. Right? Con clear? Okay. An entity shall apply this standard in accounting for borrowing cost. As the name suggests, of course, we are going to talk about the accounting for borrowing cost when it is going to be capitalized. Right? It does not apply to act it does not apply to actual or imputed cost of equity. Included preferred capital not classified as a liability. What does it mean, sir? When I'm talking about borrowing cost, what do you think? Is it a cost of debt or is it a cost of equity as well? Is it a cost of debt or is it a cost of equity as well? Bang on Ridwick. It is a cost of debt only. It is not a cost of equity. You are right. For example, a company has taken a loan for construction of the factory. Right? A company has taken a loan for construction of factory. Is it a cost of borrowing? Yes. It is a cost of debt. It is a borrowing cost. Second example, a company has raised money through IPO, through initial public offer. The company's equity got listed and the company has raised money through IPO. And when you read the IPO document, they say that whatever proceeds which will come from the IPO, which will come from the issue of equity chair, what we will do? We will use that money in the construction. We will use that money in the construction, right? Construction of factory, okay? Development of plant. We will use that money. So again, earlier they were, earlier they were, uh, you know, getting a money from raising a loan for construction of factory. Now they are raising equity for construction of factory. So whether this cost of equity, when you raise equity, you have to pay 
commission you have to pay underwriter commission brokerage you know, you have to pay to the merchant bankers you have to pay huge amount of fees to the stock exchanges so whether these cost of equity is also going to be a borrowing cost answer is no it is not a borrowing cost cost of equity is not a borrowing cost so friends in this standard we are going to talk about borrowing cost which are going to be incurred on the acquisition construction or production of a qualifying asset right so we are going to discuss about the borrowing cost which are going to be capitalized as a part of the cost of that asset the borrowing cost which is going to be capitalized as a part of the asset right now if i am raising money through loan it is a borrowing cost yes it is a borrowing cost when i am raising money through equity is it a borrowing cost the cost of equity is a borrowing cost answer is no the actual or notional cost of equity is not a borrowing cost right is that clear standard will not be applicable to borrowing cost related qualifying asset measured at fair value such as biological asset such as biological asset right friends when you read in days 41 in indias 41 the concept of biological asset is there and what is a biological asset it is a living animal or plant you will read you will understand the detail accounting treatment presentation disclosure requirement about biological asset and indias 41 says that biological asset has to be measured at fair value always right so if something is measured at fair value right it means the interest cost or whatever borrowing cost it could be every element is already factored into that because fair value is a market value it is a final value right standard says that if a company is taking a loan for the acquisition construction or production of a biological asset this borrowing cost is this borrowing cost standard is not applicable to such kind of borrowing which is used for the which is used for the biological asset right this part is not covered here right then inventories that are manufactured or otherwise produced in large quantities on a repetitive basis inventories that are manufactured or otherwise produced in large quantities on a repetitive basis sir whether borrowing cost related to inventory whether borrowing cost if a company is taking a loan and incurring that money for the manufacturing of inventory sir whether on that inventory on that manufacturing of inventory whether this borrowing cost standard is applicable answer is yes subject to these inventories should be a long term inventories these inventories should take a substantial period of time for getting ready for use right but there is one exception what is the exception this borrowing cost standard this capitalization of borrowing cost is not applicable to inventory which inventory which are manufactured or produced in large quantities in large quantities on a repetitive basis on a repetitive basis maruti tata they are manufacturing cars in large quantities and they are manufacturing cars on a repetitive basis on such inventory this borrowing cost standard is not applicable second example airbus or boeing these are the two aircraft manufacturers airbus and boeing uh, airbus and boeing right friends these companies are manufacturing or producing aircraft right not in a large quantities okay so these companies are manufacturing aircraft which takes a substantial period of time this aircraft manufacturing took more than a year okay and it is not on a large quantities it is on the basis of order and they are delivering aircraft let's say five aircraft 10 aircraft in a year to a particular aviation company so these inventory this aircraft which is manufactured by airbus or boeing right if airbus took some loan for manufacturing of this aircraft inventory 
so that money that cost of the borrowing that interest on loan has to be capitalized on these inventories right this in day s23 is applicable to these kind of aircraft manufacturing right is it clear very good nisha is asking sir in case even the preference share capital is also included under the head of equity but it has to be repaid so why is not the cost of preference share included very good ask answer very good thank you first of all friends in in days two things you need to understand in days are substance over form based tendered right there could be two kind of preference share capital number one redeemable preference share number two convertible preference share there is no irredeemable preference share right in india you cannot issue irredeemable preference share one either preference share will have a mandatory redemption second the preference share capital can be converted into equity share capital. these are the two scenarios if the preference share capital is a convertible it means it will be converted into equity so it has a substance of equity and as i told you that equity the cost of equity like dividend on equity is not included in the borrowing cost standard so that has already been carved out number 2 sir if it is a redeemable preference share a redeemable preference share is not classified as a equity share capital in indias the redeemable preference share capital has to be shown as a as a liability right has to be shown as a liability so if a company has raised money through issuance of the redeemable preference share capital then whatever dividend the company is paying on this preference share capital the company has to show that dividend as a interest cost right and that interest cost is eligible for capitalization if this money is used for the acquisition construction and production of a qualifying asset i hope it is clear i hope it is clear so in this slide we talked about three things number 1 this standard is applicable in accounting for borrowing cost which borrowing cost those borrowing cost which cannot be charged to the pnl those borrowing cost which can be capitalized as a part of the cost of the qualifying asset right what is a qualifying asset we'll discuss second the cost of borrowing includes only cost of debt only cost of borrowing it does not include cost of equity number 3 if a preference share capital is a redeemable preference share capital it is not a equity it is a liability under indias right you will read this concept in indias 109 so the dividend on the redeemable preference share capital is treated like a interest cost and it is eligible for capitalization if it is used for qualifying asset number 3 this standard is applicable to all the borrowing cost which is related to the qualifying asset but in case of a qualifying asset which is a biological asset this standard is not applicable number 2 if there are long term inventories long term inventories means the inventories which took a long period of time but if it is produced in the large quantities and on a repetitive basis then on such kind of inventories this borrowing cost capitalization standard is not applicable right so this is what we discussed in this slide i hope everything everyone is comfortable i hope everyone understood very well huh? i move forward guys thank you let's move on friends borrowing cost so what is a borrowing cost we all understand borrowing cost means interest cost and other ancillary cost which has been incurred in relation to taking this borrowing right for example normally you have seen that if you will take a loan from a bank the bank will charge a processing fee okay number 2 the companies which are taking a huge loan let's say 1000 crores two three banks are making a cartel and then they are consortium then they are they are giving this loan to the to the company probably they are also charging commission there could be some uh, mediocre who are charging commission as well right 
so there could be a processing fee there could be a commission and of course interest is of course there so what is all these things this is known as a borrowing cost this is known as a borrowing cost right and what is a qualifying asset qualifying asset is an asset which takes a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale i'll discuss both the concepts in detail but first of all to set the context the borrowing cost which is the borrowing cost which is incurred for acquisition construction and production of a qualifying asset of a qualifying asset that borrowing cost is required to be capitalized as a part of the qualifying asset what is a qualifying asset qualifying asset is an asset which takes a substantial period of time to get ready for its intended use or sale to get ready for its intended use or sale for example a company has purchased a land whether land is a qualifying asset qualifying asset means an asset which is incomplete an asset which is like a work in progress an asset which cannot be used which cannot be sold which cannot be used immediately whether land is a qualifying asset answer is no you can buy a land and you can sell a land right you can buy a land and you can sell that land so land is not a qualifying asset if a company is acquiring a land and the company wants to sell this land so it is not a qualifying asset the company is not required to do anything on that land to sell right so this land will not take a substantial period of time to get ready for the intended use or sale so it is not a qualifying asset if a company has taken a loan and then purchased the land and the intention is to sell this land of course it is not a qualifying asset number 2 the company's intention is to develop this land right develop this land for the construction of flats is it a qualifying asset answer is yes why because it will take a substantial period of time it will take a significant period of time to get ready to get ready for intended use or intended sale and what is the use or sale for this entity the intention of the entity the intention of the entity is to sell these flats right and construction of flats will take a substantial period of time construction of flats will take a substantial period of time is that right is that right friend is that right friends very good shankara is asking sir then this indas will be applicable to inventories produced in small quantities and on non repetitive basis sir yes shankara provided one thing you should keep in mind this standard is only applicable when this manufacturing of inventory will take a substantial period of time right for example aircraft manufacturing is taking a substantial period of time okay you are manufacturing let's say only four or five quantity in a year let's say but this manufacturing takes only uh, two months or one month it is not a substantial period of time you remember in our accounting standard the definition of substantial period of time is more than 12 months you remember that yeah so in indas the substantial period of time is not defined it is not more than 12 months but substantial period of time is of course a significant amount of time right so it could be more than 6 months it could be more than 9 months it could be more than 3 months okay but if question is silent if nothing is given generally it is more than 12 months even in indas and ifrs as well in accounting standard it is very clear it is more than 12 months right vimal is asking but sir when goods are manufactured in the course of trade for selling though it takes substantial time we should expense out and charge to pnl and not capitalize so vimal not capitalize h per indas 2 but capitalize h per indas 23 right h per indas 2 not capital not capitalize means this capitalization does not comes into picture h per indas 2 indas 2 is silent it says that it says that normally on inventories interest 
on borrowing cost on inventory should not be form part of cost of inventory right but the exception is given in india's 23 which says that interest cost on inventory needs to be capitalized provided it has to be produced in small quantities and on on a non repetitive basis and the underlying principle is don't forgot the first principle which is it should take a substantial period of time to get ready for intended use or sale right vimal stent will only be applicable if it is a qualifying asset if the money is used for qualifying asset what is the definition of qualifying asset which takes a substantial period of time for getting ready for intended use or sale intention is important when the intention of the management is to sell the plot of land the land is not a qualifying asset but when the intention of the management is to is to develop this land this land become a qualifying asset is that clear number 2 you are buying a ready to use office you are buying a ready to use office building is it a qualifying asset aapne ek ready to use office building khareedi is it a qualifying asset it is not a qualifying asset why this asset is already complete when you have purchased that asset whether buying a vehicle car is it a qualifying asset answer is no it is not a qualifying asset it is not a qualifying asset it is a complete asset qualifying asset is incomplete asset qualifying asset is a work in progress asset but this car this ready to use in office these are like a complete asset okay so on complete asset borrowing cost are not going to be capitalized sir when we will be able to understand is it a complete or is it a is it a qualifying i mean to say incomplete friends you have to see the intention of the management matlab sir what is meant by intention of the management again if the management intention is to sell as it is means it will not take substantial period of time probably you can say that sir management has bought a land but to get a good amount of money the management is just doing a fencing on that on that land or management is just putting a boundary wall on that land so whether this boundary wall take years whether this boundary wall will take a substantial period of time answer is no right so you cannot say that this land is not a complete land right you cannot say that sir this boundary wall will take a substantial period of time and hence this land become a qualifying asset and hence whatever money we have taken as a loan to buy this land we will capitalize the interest cost answer is right because the second thing is you need to see the significance of the time invested right but when you say that sir we have bought the land management is saying that we have bought the land for the construction of flats you understand that it will take more than a year to develop this land for the construction purposes i mean to say for construction of the flats it will take more than a year right so it is a qualifying asset yes it is a qualifying asset i hope it is clear so in the in the second example when you are buying a ready to use in office it is not a qualifying asset but when you are constructing a office is it a qualifying asset when you are constructing a office building is it a qualifying asset answer is yes it is a qualifying asset you took a loan you took a home loan and bought a home is it a qualifying asset whether this interest on home loan is going to be capitalized answer is no but you purchased a under construction property you took a home loan and you purchased a under construction property and now you are getting this construction done right is it a qualifying asset answer is yes it is a qualifying asset because the construction of the house will take a substantial period of time for getting ready for intended use or sale friends i hope this intended use or sale concept it is clear to each one of you i hope this concept is clear to each one of you please let me know if you have any doubt regarding the borrowing regarding the qualifying asset please let me know no any doubt very good friends i am moving back to my uh, excel file please let me know if my excel is visible to everyone let me know please let me know if my excel is visible to everyone very good is it visible yeah 
borrowing cost directly attributable to acquisition construction acp acp means wo cid wala acp nahi acp perjuman nahi borrowing cost directly attributable to acp of qa is required to be capitalized as a cost of the asset and what is meant by acp what is meant by acp construction construction and construction what is meant by qa question answer nahi what i mean acquisition construction construction of qualifying asset right of a qualifying asset so borrowing cost what is the main principle of india's 23 borrowing cost directly attributable to acquisition construction or production of a qualifying asset is required to be capitalized as a cost of that asset is required to be capitalized as a cost of that asset right okay friends is it clear now what is been qualifying asset qualifying asset means qualifying asset means incomplete asset progress asset right means which is not complete as per the intention of the management as per the use intended by the management as per the use decided by the manager right what is qualifying asset is an asset which takes a substantial bit of time getting ready for intended use or sale what is meant by spot it means substantial bit of time substantial bit of time for getting ready for intended use or sale right spot means substantial bit of time for getting ready for intended use or sale sir substantial bit of time is defined as accounting standard it is defined in yes it is not defined substantial bit of time is not defined right sir then what could be the substantial period of time it could be more than 3 months it could be more than 6 months it could be more than 9 months sir if the question will uh, come in exam then what we will do for example the question says that the construction of factory is getting completed in 6 months and the company has taken loan on that construction of the factory on the factory sir whether we should capitalize the interest cost or we should not capitalize if question will ask then first of all you will say that we are assuming that this 6 month is a substantial period of time and then you will apply in days 23 right if the question will come in exam then you have to capitalize this interest cost and you can just give your assumption in one line that's that's clear sir if the question is silent and for example if a judgment is required right if a judgment is required in that case you can take a judgment of more than 12 months as right if the question is straight forward that itna loan liya construction kiya in that case you can capitalize assuming that it is a substantial period of time but if the period is one month if the period is only one and half month two weeks will you capitalize answer is in that case you can just give an assumption considering the period is very minuscule we are preparing financials for a year and the period is just one month or two month or two weeks okay we are not considering it as a it as a uh, we are not considering it as a as a substantial period of time right sir on the safer side if you want to do this so you should not consider this as a substantial period of time like one month one and half month two month or two weeks right three weeks you will not consider this as a substantial period of time but still if you want to give your answer in both ways and you can write that if this would have been a substantial period of time then this amount should have been capitalized you can you can write in that manner as well okay but normally if it is one month two months you can ignore that as a substantial period of time mansa is asking sir on renovation is it applicable mansa on renovation it is not applicable right on on renovation it is not applicable sir if we are renovating so basically you are renovating existing asset okay you had a already or you have bought a under construction property which is which is into a very bad condition now you are renovating you are modifying and it will take a substantial period of time in that case this ndas 23 is applicable if you have taken a borrowing right 
but if you have take if you have purchased the house and you are just you know you are just uh, getting your furniture constructed in your house like your tv unit like your cupboards okay fall ceiling in that case it is it is not going to be capitalized it is not considered as a as a as a qualifying asset right is it clear friends are you comfortable shall i move forward okay very good it is applicable in renovation but will it be applicable in redevelopment yes it is applicable in redevelopment again remember one condition in your mind what is the intention of the management number 2 will it take a substantial period of time for redevelopment right for redevelopment okay now let i have a question ajal limited wants to open its office in mumbai and delhi ajal is ready to move in office in mumbai is it a qualifying asset answer is no what is the accounting treatment interest on mumbai office loan what is the accounting treatment on interest on mumbai office loan what is the accounting treatment of interest on mumbai office loan it is going to asking panel it is going to be asking panel ajal purchased land for construction of office building for delhi office for mumbai office he purchased a constructed office he purchased a ready to move in office but for delhi office he purchased the land and now he started construction is it a qualifying asset answer is yes so what happens on interest on delhi office loan it is going to be capitalized ajal has taken a loan for both those these properties right plot of land dividing into land parcels till the land parcels the company has taken let's say 1 acre of land and the company is just uh, dividing the land into the land parcels right is it a qualifying as an answer is right what happens if the company has taken a loan it has to go to the pnl the interest cost goes to the pnl but if the company has is the land construction of flats and then sell the flat to the customer is it a qualifying asset answer is yes it will take a substantial period of time but just dividing into the land parcels will not take a substantial period of time right am i clearly audible to everyone am i clearly audible to everyone friends now borrowing cost are of four types borrowing cost are of four types borrowing cost are interest and other cost for borrowing of funds it may includes interest expenses calculated using the effective interest method under indas 109 sir what does it mean first of all when i am saying borrowing cost are of four types so number 2 type is direct interest cost number 1 number 2 is ancillary cost like processing fees right so friends in our i gap what we were doing whatever processing fees we are paying we are taking the treatment of processing fee at the inception of the loan right for example you took a loan and uh, at the time of taking a loan you paid 5 lakh rupees as a processing fee normally the company used to charge it off in the pnl or company used to capitalize that processing fee but in indas in i gap the concept was charging a interest on a time proportion basis right on a on a simple rate average on a simple rate basis in indas the concept is effective interest rate sir what is a effective interest rate you will again read in detail you will again understand in detail the concept of effective interest rate in indas 109 right but just to give you a flavor 
दैट वॉट इज मिंड बाय इफेक्टिव इंटरेस्ट मेथड वॉट इज मिंड बाय इफेक्टिव इंटरेस्ट मेथड जस्ट टू गिव यू अ फ्लेवर In, let me go back to my uh, PowerPoint presentation. Please let me know if uh, so. Again, let me go back to the Excel file and please let me know if the Excel file is visible. Okay, give me a second. Yes, whether Excel file is visible now? Visible now? Borrowing costs are interest and other cost of borrowing. Number one, interest processing fee and transaction cost on effective interest rate basis as per India S zero nine. Let me talk about this concept. What is this concept? Borrowing costs are interest and other cost of borrowing. Interest processing fee and transaction cost. There are some transaction costs as well. So these. Has to be calculated on effective interest rate basis as per India S one zero nine. Sir, what is meant by effective interest rate? Let me tell you. Let's say a company has taken a loan from State Bank of India for hundred crore, right? Interest rate is ten percent. Processing fee paid is five percent at the time of loan, which is repayable in one year. It, which is repayable in one year. That information is given. Loan from State Bank of India, hundred crores. Interest rate is ten percent. Processing fee paid is five percent at the time of loan, and this loan is repayable in one year. Now you need to calculate your interest rate. Your normal interest rate for IGF is ten percent. It is clear. Now what is your effective interest rate? Right. What is your effective interest? Rate? Tell me, friends, how to calculate the effective interest rate? How to calculate the effective interest rate? First of all, you tell me the loan is hundred crores. The processing fee is five percent. How much inflow of money will be there on the date of loan? How much money this company will receive? What is the inflow? What is the inflow? What is inflow? Is it hundred crore? Is it hundred and five crores? Is it ninety five crores? What is the inflow? What is the inflow of fund? Very good. Inflow is hundred minus five crore because processing fee is like a transaction cost. It has been deducted from the payment of loan itself, right? Or one hand the company has paid a loan. And the second hand, the company, sorry, the bank has given the loan, and on the second hand, the bank has taken the processing fee. The bank has debited the account by processing fee. So the balance which is there in the company's accounts for use is only ninety-five crore. It is not hundred crores. Very good, right, Sha? Right, Abdul, and right, Mansha. It is ninety-five crores. The inflow is ninety-five crore. Now, what is my outflow? My inflow is ninety-five crore. That is very much clear. What is my outflow? What is my outflow? What is my outflow? Inflow is ninety-five crore. My outflow. My outflow are of two types. If it has to be visible in one year, number one, we need to. I need to interest. I need to pay principal of hundred crore. I pass IR ninety five. But how much I need to pay as a principal? Hundred crore. How much I need to pay as a normal interest? Normal interest. Hundred ka ten percent is ten crore. So friend, I need to pay hundred and ten crore. I need to pay hundred and ten crores as a principal and as a interest. I need to pay hundred and ten crores as a principal and as a interest. Right. I need to pay hundred and ten crores. Okay. 
How much excess payment I need to make? How much excess payment I need to make in one year? This payment I need to make in this one year, hundred and ten minus ninety-five crore. Fifteen crore I am paying extra just due to the fact that I have taken this loan. Just due to the fact that I have taken this loan, right? Now, what is the? Someone will ask. Is the rate of interest? You will say ten percent. But what is your effective interest rate? What is your effective interest rate? Your effective interest rate is you are paying fifteen on ninety five. You are paying fifteen on ninety five. Your effective interest rate is how much? Your effective interest rate is fifteen point seven nine percent. Have you understood the concept of effective interest rate? Have you understood the concept of effective interest rate? Yeah. Tanisha, it is not fifteen divided by hundred. It is the effective interest rate is a rate which equates your inflow and outflow, which equates your inflow and outflow. Right? Means means whatever you are giving as an outflow. Whatever you are paying, please tell me. You are paying hundred crore. You have to pay a principal of hundred crore. You have to pay an interest of ten crore. What is the total amount you will pay? Hundred and ten. On the day one, how much you got? On the day one, how much you got? On the day one, you got only ninety five. I am paying you ten rupees, and and right away I am deducting one rupees. So your net net, your effective amount of money which you are getting for use. Is ninety five or nine? It is not. It is not ten, uh, right? Anyone who is having any doubt, although don't worry, friends. You remember when I show you this borrowing cost ka breakup? It is written that H per India is one zero nine. Effective interest rate H per India is one zero nine. So you will do lot of illustration and practical things on India is one zero nine, right? Not to worry about that. Effective interest rate means the interest rate, the rate, right, which you will put on your net inflow. It will give you your net outflow. Right? Clear? Not clear? Clear? Not clear? Clear. Where in mind or from mind? In mind. Now, in this example, to extend this example, let's say the land for construction of building. The company has purchased the land for construction of building, and building has been completed by end of half year. So, company loan building, and the building has been completed by end of half year. Calculate the amount to be capitalized. Calculate the amount to be capitalized. Amount of interest, amount of loan to be capitalized. Right. Calculate the amount of interest or loan to be capitalized. And. How to compute the amount of capitalization? Interest capitalized. Tell me whether I'll fifteen fifteen crore I need to raise, or I need to capitalize only till the time this asset got complete. Only till the time the asset got complete. Once the asset get completed, so interest after that period will go to P and L, right? So in this case, in this case, what is my interest? So ninety-five crore is my net inflow. Rate of interest is fifteen point nine percent. Multiply by 
qualifying at a time period is six months because it is written in this question that the building has been completed in six months, right? And the interest is seven point five crore. For simple, you can see in this case the full year interest is fifteen crore. The effective interest excess payment is fifteen crore. So what will be the cost for half year? It is seven point five crore. As simple as. Right, friends. It is it is seven point five crore. It is seven point five crore. Is that clear? Dear friends, let's go back to the presentation. So we discuss this aspect. We discuss this aspect. Uh, Interest expense calculated using the effective interest method under India S one zero nine. Then your uh, interest on lease obligations H per India S one one six leases. Interest on lease obligations H per India S one one six leases. Friends, again this lease standard India S one one six. This is again a unique and a new standard, right? You will have a four to five sessions on. Indias one one six. You will have four to five sessions on Indias one one six. Sir, what does it mean? Interest on lease obligation is also going to be capitalized as a cost of borrowing. So, friends, let me tell you how it works. Have you seen any construction site? Have you seen any site where construction is taking place? Yeah, you must have seen. the sites where construction is taking place be it construction of flats be it construction of house be it construction of office construction of factory you must have seen and on this construction site you must have seen the big machineries like that mixer machine which mixes the sand which mixes the cement right so there are a lot of machines the lorry is there which which keeps the bricks or stones and which is uplifting those bricks and stones there could be a there could be a temporary lifts which is used for the for the uplifting of the material right so on the construction site you must have seen lot of different machineries lot of different like like your temporary lift like your lorries like your uh, mixer machines right like your weight lifting machines on the metro construction site you must have seen the cranes right the cranes which are putting these you know Cement slabs, iron slabs, and they are just keeping on the bridge, right? So a lot of you know these kind of machineries are used on the construction sites. Let's say I am a company ABC Limited. I am constructing a plant. I am constructing a factory. Okay, for construction of factory, I have not taken any loan. I am just making this example a sim very simple example. i am using my own funds to construct to construct this factory i am using my own fund okay i am using my own funds for construction of this factory and for the construction of the factory i took some machineries on a lease basis right on a rental basis like i i took the temporary lifts i took the lorries i took the cranes i took the mixer machines so i took these all machineries on a lease basis so what i need to pay i need to pay a lease rental in igf if anything which i am taking on a operating lease basis i am paying a lease rental on that i am debiting my lease rental and i am crediting my cash i am debiting my lease rental and i am crediting my cash okay lease rental to bank lease rental to cash right is that clear but in indas what happens you remember in your accounting standard 19 you must have heard about two concept operating lease finance lease in operating lease whatever rental you are paying you are charging it to pnl straight away <laughs> but in finance lease whatever rentals you are paying 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू टूक अ मशीनरी ऑन अ लीज बेसिस फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ थ्री इयर्स सो वॉट एवर रेंटल्स यू आर पेइंग और यू हैव टू पे यू आर कैपिटलाइजिंग दोज रेंटल्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ प्रेजेंट वैल्यू एंड यू आर डेबिटिंग लीज होल्ड एसेट एंड यू आर क्रेडिटिंग लीज होल्ड लाइबिलिटी यू रिमेंबर द अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंस लीज डू यू रिमेंबर द अकाउंटिंग ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ फाइनेंस लीज येस और नो where you are debiting the leasehold asset and you are crediting the leasehold liability yeah yes good so lot of students have confirmed that they know the finance lease accounting they know that in case of a finance lease the asset is going to be created and the liability is going to be created the asset needs to be depreciated over the life of the lease and the liability is nullified by charging an interest and by paying the rental basically whenever you pay the rental your liability will get reduced okay. so friends like a finance lease accounting in case of indas 116 again if you are taking something on a lease basis you have to create a right of use asset and you have to credit a lease liability on the basis of present value of the lease payments now when you have created a lease liability on a discounted value let's say using the 10% discount rate you have to unwind this discount right means you have to charge a interest cost on this liability you have to charge a interest cost if let's say 100 rupees present value is there you have to charge 10% on that okay so it will be 110 and when you pay rental it has to be reduced from 110 so it means it means in indas 116 for all the leases you have to create an asset and you have to create a liability and you have to charge a interest on those lease liability friends in my example when the company is constructing a factory and the company has taken some assets on a lease basis right so of course the company will create an asset and the company will create a liability lease liability on these leasehold equipments right in this case whatever interest the company is charging whatever interest the company is recognizing on the lease liability so that interest is going to be capitalized as a part of the cost of factory that interest is going to be capitalized as a part of the cost of factory is it clear to all of you is it clear or not clear is it clear or not clear is it clear friend or it is not clear so let me again go back to my excel file so that when i'll share the notes with you have the complete note interest on lease obligation as per indas 116 this was a second right interest on lease obligation on lease hold equipment will be taken as a part of borrowing cost for example a limited example a limited is constructing a factory the company has taken a crane lorry and other equipment on lease for 2 years the company will create right of use asset and lease obligation on lease hold equipment as per indas 116 the company will charge interest on lease obligation this interest is also form part of your borrowing cost if this lease equipment is used for the construction of qualifying asset right is that clear is that clear sir Muhammad Abdul was asking sir building construction took 6 months in your example of effective interest rate method is it still capitalized yes abdul again i am repeating friends in indas the substantial period of time is not defined in accounting standard it was 12 year months for all the practical purposes even in examination you have to consider 12 months but if the question will give you information like the construction took 6 months 7 months 5 months and the company has taken a loan 
will you consider it as a capitalization answer is yes even 6 month is a substantial period okay yes you need to do that Prada is asking to support there is a pen manufacturing company and it gets a customized order to create a jewel studded pen for which the company takes a loan and the pen is completed after one month so Praja, one month is not a substantial period of time right friends practically how it works let me tell you for all practical purposes generally it is more than 12 months why even the guidance is not there in indias but guidance is there in accounting stack right so at least in your country some regulation will give you guidance some regulation will give you guidance so tell me if i talk about this uh, you must have seen the sundry creditors written back have you seen the creditors written back or liabilities written back in in the books of accounts of any company have you seen that yeah have you seen that okay yes what is the policy of the company why the when the company will uh, when the company will write back these liabilities after three years why three years because the company says that if the if the creditor has not demanded the money for three years even in our country there is a law of limitation even in our country there is a law of limitation right normally what happens friends when you go on an audit right you must see that there is an old age outstanding which is there in the books of accounts so normally what company does if it is not disputed the company write back these liabilities after three years the company write back these liabilities and what happens in that case what happens in that case there is nothing given in our indian accounting standard or as but the company is taking the inference from the other laws and regulation it says that the law of limitation is three years if we have not paid for three years and the and the creditor is not asking money so it means he will not ask money right so we, we are writing back those liability likewise Although guidance is not given in account in India's, but it is given in accounting standard. We can refer this 12 months as a substantial period of time. But the question comes, if the question will come in exam, and if it is 5 months, 6 months, 7 months, probably it is there to check your knowledge, whether it is only circulating 12 months in your mind as an accounting standard, or have you read India's thoroughly, right? So if you have read India's thoroughly, then how to answer this question, as I have already told you, please start your question with, although, although the time period for completion of this asset is six months, we are considering this as a substantial period of time, right? And hence, India's 23 is applicable in this aspect. When the examiner will read this thing, he will be able to understand that you have considered six months as a substantial period of time. Okay. But friends, when you will say that three weeks, one month, even two months is substantial period of time, probably that will not be acceptable position. Okay. So you have to take a judgment. And in my view, if it is more than four months or if it is, let's say more than six months or it is six months, in that case, you can take it as a substantial period of time. Practically, company create a policies. Right? A big companies where a lot of constructions are taking place, they are creating a policy around it. And in the policy, they are saying that, you know, any time period beyond six months or beyond three months for completion of a construction is considered as a substantial period of time. And for those time period, three months, four months, six months, whatever it may be, the company is capitalizing the interest rate. Right, so present. Adit is asking for interest obligation to be capitalized on one time or as an even paid. Interest obligation has to be capitalized on an accrual basis. Over the period, and over the period in which the construction has taken place. Right. For example, the company has taken a loan for five years. 1000 crore loan for five years. It, interest rate is 10%. What is the what is the what is the amount of interest every year? What is the amount of interest every year? 
1000 crore 10% interest loan taken for 5 years just three information i have given you this information i have given you yes 100 crore is your 1000 multiplied by 10% 100 crore is your interest of loan every year right now this loan has been taken for 5 year every year you will pay 100 crore of interest this amount has taken for construction of a factory the factory construction has been completed construction of factory has been completed the factory construction has been completed in a period of 2 years the loan has not been paid the loan is still outstanding but the construction of the factory get completed in 2 years so in the first 2 year these 100 crore will be capitalized so once the factory construction has taken place once the factory construction has taken place once the factory construction is completed so after the completion of factory in the remaining 3 year in the remaining 3 year the interest on loan will be charged to pnl is that clear is that clear friends sir geeta is asking if there is a time period of 3 months then what to do geeta if it it is a question which is asked in examination so if the question is asking your view that the time period is 3 months what is your view whether interest should be capitalized or interest should not be capitalized you should write that in this case interest should not be capped but if the question is not asking your views right the question straight away asking what is the amount which should be capitalized in that case you should capitalize this right and you should write this fact although in accounting standard 16 the substantial period of time was more than 12 months in indias it is silent right but in this question to solve this question we are considering three months as a substantial period of time and then you need to then you need to you know answer that question so you should made it very clear you should made it very clear that since it is a quarter right and less than that ideally you should not consider as a substantial problem mansa is asking can conceptual framework for fr guide on substantial period answer is there? guys don't make it, make it very simple if it is a question which is asked in exam consider that significant period of time okay agar do hafte char hafte ek mahina do mahina don't consider that but if it is any period three months or more please consider that as a substantial period of time right right but normally if someone will ask you then it is more than 12 months that there or do you have any confusion please let me know if you have any confusion is that clear very good so friends this interest expense part is clear this interest expense part is clear or not clear is it clear interest on lease obligation part is clear point number c very 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 important point exchange a difference arising from foreign currency borrowings to the extent they are regarded as an adjustment to interest cost to the extent they are regarded as an adjustment to interest cost exchange differences arising from foreign currency borrowings to the extent they are regarded as an adjustment to interest cost friends what does it mean let me give you an example you must have seen that normally the companies took the borrowing in foreign exchange as well the company took the borrowing in foreign exchange why the company took the foreign exchange borrowing can you tell me why the company took the foreign exchange borrowing if you will go to us if you go to dubai middle east you know the rate of interest is if you go to uk the rate of interest is hardly 1% 2% the inflation is very low there but if i talk about india the inflation is 7% 8% right the rate of interest is 10% 11% okay so friends if i have to raise a debt if i have to raise a debt 
in Indian currency in India, I have to pay an interest of let's say 10%. If I have to raise a debt from US market as an external commercial borrowing in US dollars, probably I need to pay a interest rate. I need to pay an interest rate of 2%. So instead of 10%, I need to pay an interest rate of 2%. Friends, can you see the saving of 8%? Can you see the saving of 8%? When I am taking a loan and when I am paying in Indian currency, it is 10%. But when I am paying in foreign currency, US dollar, it is 2%. So, I am saving an interest of 8%. Friends, now please tell me, do I have any risk? Do I have any risk for taking a loan in foreign currency? I took a loan of 100 crore in foreign currency. 100 crore. For let's say I took a loan of 1 crore dollar in foreign currency. Right. Instead of Indian currency. And I got a cheaper rate of interest of 2%. Yes, you are right. There is a risk of exchange difference. There is a risk of loss of foreign exchange. If the rupee get depreciated, if the dollar becomes strong, I took a loan of 1 crore dollar, 1 crore dollar. If let's say rupee depreciates, but depreciated by 5 rupees, I end up paying an extra amount of 5%. I, I end up paying an extra amount of 1 crore dollar multiplied by 5 is 5 crore rupees. Right? So there is a foreign exchange risk. There is a foreign exchange risk. The right, Tanisha, the exchange rate fluctuation in adverse nature will be a risk. So friends, why I have taken a foreign currency loan just because it gives me a lower rate of interest. What is the risk for taking a foreign currency loan? There is a risk of foreign exchange difference, exchange rate fluctuation. Standard says that, standard says that, Let's say you took a loan of 1 crore dollar and the rate of dollar versus rupee is 100 rupees. The rate of dollar versus rupee is 100 rupees. Right. So <coughs> the spot rate is 100 rupees when you took a loan. So 1, do, 1 crore dollar multiplied by 100 is 100 crore rupees. And you are paying an interest of 2%. So what is your amount of interest? What is your amount of interest? Let's say 100 crore multiplied by 2% is 2 crore, 2 crore rupees. In foreign currency borrowing, you are paying 2 crore. In Indian currency, you are again buying, you, you are again taking a loan of 100 crore and you are paying an interest of 10%. So in Indian currency, you are paying 10 crore. In foreign currency, convertible things, you are paying 2 crore. What is your saving? 8 crore. 8 crore is your saving. Friends, so, from beginning of the period where you took a loan to the end of the reporting period when you are paying an interest, the price fluctuates from 100 to 105. The price fluctuates from 100 to 105. So, your loan balance, your loan balance will increase by 5 crore rupees. When you took a loan, you multiply 1 crore multiply by 100 spot rate. Now you are multiplying 1 crore multiply by 105. Right? So from 100 crore, it become 105 crore. From 100 crore, it become 105 crore. So how much? How much loss you are incurring due to the exchange rate fluctuation? It is 5 crore. It is 5 crore, right? See, and consider paying an interest of 2 crore. In Indian currency, you are paying an interest of 10 crore. But in foreign currency, you have another risk of 5 crore. Right? So what is your total cost in the foreign currency? 2 crore interest, 5 crore exchange rate loss, exchange rate fluctuation loss. And what is your total interest in foreign currency? This total interest in foreign currency is 10 crore. So friends, standard says that whenever you are taking a foreign currency loan and there is a foreign exchange adjustment there is a foreign exchange loss exchange rate fluctuation 
you will consider you will consider the exchange rate fluctuation as a cost of interest only as a part of interest only subject to subject to it should not exceed subject to the capping subject to the capping of the amount which you are pay, which you have paid in interest which you have paid as a interest in indian currency matlab agar aap indian currency mein pay karte to 10 crore pay karte agar aap loan interest indian currency mein lete to 10 crore pay karte so 10 crore tak ka agar aapko exchange rate ka loss hota hai foreign currency interest ko mila ke us extent tak aap usko interest treat kar sakte hain right means let's say just tweaking this example 2 crore is my interest cost and let's say the dollar rate the, the the dollar rate increased from 100 to 109 so what is my foreign currency loss in this case 9 crore is my foreign currency loss 9 crore is my exchange rate loss 9 crore and my interest is 2 crore so what is my total what is my total outflow in foreign exchange 2 crore interest 9 crore exchange rate fluctuation 2 plus 9 is 11 what will be my exposure if i would have taken a loan in indian currency 10 crore so in this case 2 crore is your foreign currency interest and you can capitalize only 8 crore of exchange difference as a interest cost the remaining 1 crore will straight away go to the pnl right is it clear clear sir vimal is asking sir what about forward cover for interest risk vimal that is a hedging instrument and that has to be treated separately okay that does not form part of your your borrowing cost stand is that clear so friends just give you a more insight about this let's discuss one illustration on icai study material and probably with you will have a more clarity on this part please let me know if the illustration number 5 is visible on the screen please let me know if illustration number 5 is visible on the screen is it visible on the screen is it visible on the screen friends abc limited has taken a loan of 20000 us dollar on 1st april 2001 for constructing a plant at an interest rate of 5% per annum payable on annual basis what is the foreign currency loan 20000 us dollar right what is the interest rate in foreign currency loan 5% means 1000 us dollar you have to pay as an interest every year on 1st april 2001 the exchange rate between the currencies that is usd versus rupee was 45 rupees per us dollar it means 45 multiply by 20000 comes out at uh, 9 lakh rupees so 9 lakh rupees is the equivalent amount of indian currency the exchange rate on the reporting date that is after 1 year on 31st march 2002 becomes 48 rupees per us dollar so dollar become stronger by 3 rupees so there is a 3 rupees of loss on this 20000 dollars of loan so 20000 multiply by 3 60000 so there is a foreign exchange loss of 60000 rupees right the corresponding amount could have been borrowed by abc limited from state bank of india in local currency at an interest of 11% per annum as on 1st april 2001 so the corresponding amount right 20000 us dollar ka corresponding amount hai 20000 multiply by 45 9 lakh rupees 9 lakh rupees can be borrowed from state bank of india 9 lakh rupees can be borrowed from state bank of india in indian currency at 11% rate of interest so in us dollar we are paying 1000 dollar as an interest every year in indian cur in indian currency loan we need to pay 11% rate of interest in foreign currency it is 5% in indian currency it is 11% but in foreign currency we got a exchange rate hit of 60000 rupees as well right compute the borrowing cost to be capitalized for the construction of plant by abc limited i hope the question is clear to everyone i hope the question is clear to everyone guys 
any doubt on this question? Yeah? Any doubt in understanding this question? Please let me know if you have any doubt in understanding this question. Do let me know. This is a very important question and normally in borrowing cost standard kind of question is asked in the examination. This kind of question is asked in the examination. Thanks. Now step number one. Please write down step number one. In this kind of question, you have to go step by step. Step number one is calculate interest on foreign currency loan. Please write down step number one. Calculate interest on foreign currency loan. What is my interest on foreign currency loan? My interest on foreign currency loan is 20,000 US dollar multiplied by 5%, which comes out at 1,000 USD. When you convert in INR, you have to pay, you have to pay interest at the end of the year, right? At that point of time, what is your what is your exchange rate? 40 48. When you will pay, you will pay interest at the end of the year. What for? What is your rate? An exchange rate. It is 48. 1000 multiplied by 48 is 48,000. Step number two. Calculate exchange difference on foreign exchange loss. Foreign currency loan. Sorry. Calculate exchange difference on foreign currency loan. What is your exchange difference on foreign currency loan? The exchange difference on foreign currency loan is how much? $20,000 multiplied by 48 minus 45. So 20,000 multiplied by 3 comes out 60,000. Right. Step number 3. Calculate interest on Indian currency loan. Calculate interest on Indian currency loan. What will be your interest on Indian currency loan? What First of all, what is your Indian currency loan? $20,000 multiplied by 45. 9 lakh rupees. So you would have taken 9 lakh rupees in Indian currency, right, as a loan. 11% is the rate of interest. So 9 lakh multiplied by 11% comes out 99,000. Now, you need to compute the savings. You need to compute the savings. Foreign currency loan. What is your savings in Indian currency? What is your savings in interest cost due to foreign currency loan? Your interest in Indian currency is 99,000. Your interest in foreign currency is how much? Remember step 80. Your savings is 51,000. You have to. You have to. Capitalize the exchange loss up to this 51,000. Up to this 51,000 as a part of your interest cost. But your exchange loss is 60,000. Your exchange loss is 60,000. Out of this 60,000, 50. You need to capitalize and 9,000 units to pass to PNL. 9,000 units to pass to PNL. Is that okay? Is that clear? Is that clear, friends? Yes or no? Not clear or clear? Clear, not clear. Yeah, very good. Very good. So let me let me show you on the Excel file as well. Let me show you on the Excel file. Friends, please let me know if my Excel file is visible. Do let me know if my Excel file is visible. visible just give me a second i think it is not visible it must be visible now it must be visible now right so this was the information which was given foreign currency loan 20000 us dollar rate of interest 50% exchange rate Date of taken, taking this loan 45 rupees per US dollar. Closing rate is 48 rupees US dollar. Indian currency loan from State Bank of India must be at 9 lakh rupees. How this 9 lakh rupees come? 20,000 multiplied by 45. 
This is the equivalent amount of Indian currency loan. The rate of interest is eleven percent. We need to we need to see the capitalization of interest, right? So step number one: calculate interest on foreign currency loan. Twenty thousand US dollar multiply by five percent. Twenty thousand US dollar multiply by five percent, right? It comes out one thousand US dollar. You are when you convert in INR. So one thousand multiply by forty eight. Why forty eight? Because you will pay the interest at the end of the year. Okay, you will pay the interest at the end of the year. Right? You will pay the interest at the end of the year. Step one is clear to everyone. Step number one is clear to everyone or not clear? Can you please confirm me quickly whether step number one is clear or not? It is clear. Very good. Number two. Calculate exchange difference on foreign currency loan. Twenty thousand dollar is there. The closing rate is forty eight. The opening rate was forty five. The exchange loss is twenty thousand multiplied by three sixty thousand is your exchange loss. Forty eight thousand is your interest in foreign currency. Sixty thousand your exchange loss. The total hit is forty eight plus sixty. Now coming to the step number three. When coming to step number three. Interest on Indian currency loan. So the loan which you have taken in Indian currency, which you would have taken in Indian currency, is nine lakh rupees. Multiply by eleven percent is ninety nine thousand rupees, right? So entering into a foreign currency loan has given you two hits, forty eight thousand plus sixty thousand. But Indian currency loan will give you only one hit, which is ninety nine thousand. Now the question comes, sir. What should we do? Either we have taken a loan in foreign currency, or we should take only forty-eight thousand. Answer is no, because the standard says that the amount which you have saved by taking a foreign currency loan in comparison to Indian currency loan, right? Whatever you have saved to that extent, the exchange rate loss to that exchange to that extent has to be considered as a as a interest cost. For example, number four. You need to compute the savings in interest to foreign loan. Interest in Indian currency is ninety nine thousand. Interest in foreign currency is fifty eight thousand. Your saving is fifty one thousand. Your saving is fifty one thousand, right? What is your exchange loss? Exchange loss is sixty thousand. So, friends, in this case, the extent of fifty one thousand exchange difference to the extent of fifty one thousand needs to be capitalized, right? What is your total capitalization? Total interest of eight thousand plus exchange rate difference of fifty one thousand. Total nine nine thousand needs to be capitalized as a interest cost, and the remaining nine thousand will go to P and L, right? This is how it has to be done. Total exposure is forty eight thousand into sixty thousand exchange difference. This is how it has to be done. If you have any question, I would be happy to answer. If you have any question, I would be happy to discuss. Ravish, is that clear? Geeta, is that clear? Mofita, ये जो कांडलु, is it clear? Mansha, Nisha. Clear. What we have done? Step number one, we have calculated interest cost in foreign currency. Step number two, we have calculated the exchange fluctuation impact. Number three, we have calculated have taken this loan in Indian currency. What would be the interest? Right. Number four, we have computed the savings. What is my savings due to foreign currency loan? To the extent of savings, I have capitalized the exchange rate fluctuation. Simple. Right, sir. Will you share this Excel file? Yes, I will share this Excel file today itself with the ICI. Mofita is asking for ten thousand will go to P and L Mofita as a exchange rate loss. Okay, this nine thousand will go to P and L. Is that clear? So, friends. 
this part we have already computed this part we have closed this part we have understood since this borrowing cost we have already covered interest expenses on effective interest method interest on lease liabilities exchange rate difference arising from foreign currency borrowing to the extent they are regarded as an adjustment to interest cost to the extent of saving you need to capitalize the exchange rate fluctuation qualifying asset is an asset which takes a substantial period of time to get ready for intended use or sale example of qualifying asset is pp investment property during the construction period intangible asset during a development period and made to order inventories the inventory which has been manufactured by giving an order like aircraft right so airbus does not keep the aircraft ready airbus only manufacture the aircraft when it has got the order from the aircraft you guys must have heard that air india has ordered 470 aircraft indigo airline has ordered 500 aircraft so they have given the huge order bulk orders but it will take a huge time to the to getting the delivery of these aircraft right they will not get the 500 aircraft delivered in one year or in in six months they will get the delivery into a staggered manner like every year they will get a delivery of 10 aircraft 15 aircraft right so it took it, it took a substantial period of time it is a non repetitive inventory it took a substantial period of time and it is only manufactured at the request of the buyer right friends then we covered this exchange returns case study okay summarize supraza has summarized in a very beautiful manner she is saying sir to summarize the maximum amount of capitalization will be equal to borrowing cost in indian interest rates very good you are right supraza so going by the substance why this part is covered here going by the substance since you are taking a foreign currency loan you are saving on interest but you are losing on exchange rate fluctuation so you are right the maximum amount that can be capitalized is the equivalent interest cost in indian currency you are right and it's 8:20 now let's have a break for uh, it's 8:28 now let's have a break for 7 minutes right we will start at 8:35 
friends so we understood the meaning of borrowing cost we understood the meaning of qualifying asset now let us understand the recognition concept and recognition concept is very simple which we have already discussed we need to capitalize the borrowing cost which is directly attributable to the acquisition construction and production of a qualifying asset as a part of the cost of the asset right and when you will capitalize this borrowing cost as a part of the cost of the asset when it is probable that it will result in future economic benefit your borrowing cost can be made reliably sir what does it mean for example you are constructing a factory you have taken a loan for the construction of factory right so due to some government norms since uh, you know uh, your when you construct a factory your chimneys will emitting a pollution so ngt came into a picture ngt is a government agency i would say so the national green tribunal came into picture and they said ki this factory cannot be constructed at this place or even if this factory can be constructed if the factory would be constructed the production will not continue at this place right the production will not happen at this place why because this is a green area and it will hamper the hamper the environment so number 1 the factory will not have a future economic benefit even though it will be completed it will not have a future economic benefit right so the actual amount which i am i am i am incurring on the construction of the factory for example cement bricks material labor overheads right the actual amount which i am incurring even though i would not be able to recover the future economic benefit from this factory should i capitalize this borrowing cost again as a part of the cost of the asset so when i will capitalize the borrowing cost this cost will become an asset right so should i in this particular case should i again continue to capitalize this borrowing cost in this asset considering this asset is already impaired or going to be impaired answer is no. so that is why this concept is there number 1 the borrowing cost which is directly related to the acquisition construction and production of a qualifying asset self form part of the cost of the asset and it will only be capitalized when it is probable that future economic benefit will be received and the cost can be made reliably right directly attributable means as simple as that if the borrowing would not have been taken this cost would not have been there if the borrowing would not have been taken this cost would not have been there as simple as that. clear and now the measurement part we understood the meaning we understood that what is a borrowing cost what are the element of borrowing cost we understood the concept of effective interest rate we understood the concept of interest on lease liability we understood the in concept of capitalization of exchange rate fluctuation in case of a foreign currency borrowing right we understood the recognition part now the accounting part comes into picture and when i say accounting part how to measure borrowing cost please write down there are two kind of um, uh, borrowings one is specific borrowing and the second one is general borrowing right <clears throat> what is specific borrowing for example you are you are going to construct a plant okay or air airbus is going to manufacture in aircraft <clears throat> sorry for that for that plant or for that aircraft you are taking a loan right so this loan is dedicated to that item the loan is dedicated to either that plant or either that aircraft right so these loan is taken specifically the funds are borrowed specifically the funds are borrowed specifically in this case standard says that whatever interest and other cost whatever borrowing cost which is related to this fund which is related to this loan has to be capitalized as a part of the cost of the asset till the time of completion right but generally what happens for example you have taken a loan of 100 crore on 1st april 
right and you have taken this loan you have taken the term loan for construction of the factory construction of the plant this 100 crore would not be invested on 1st april itself the expenditure or outflow of 100 crore will take a substantial period of time right for example today you have invested 20 crore on the on the purchase of land and on the boundary wall and extra etc etc et after 15 days you will you will incur another 5 crore rupees so this 100 crore has to be invested or has to be spent gradually in a period of one year or two year or whatever in the during the construction period right now what company does since the, when the company has taken a loan, the interest cost meter has already been started. So whenever the funds are remaining idle, those funds the company is depositing into the temporary FDs, temporary fixed deposit, so that they will get some temporary interest income, right? So during the construction phase, during the phase of a qualifying asset, if you have taken a loan and you are paying the borrowing cost, this borrowing cost has to be capitalized. But during this construction phase, if you have deposited some idle funds and you are getting some temporary income, that temporary income has to be reduced from the that temporary income has to be reduced from the capitalized borrowing cost. So that temporary income has to be reduced from the borrowing cost and the net amount needs to be capitalized. As simple as that. is that clear? Is that clear, friends? Is it clear or clear? Clear or clear? Is it clear? Yeah. Very good. Let me discuss this example this this concept with the help of this example right let's discuss illustration number 6 alpha limited on 1st april sorry alpha limited on 1st april 2001 borrowed 9% 30 lakh to finance the construction of two qualifying assets construction started on 1st april 2001 the loan facility was availed on 1st April 2001 and was utilized as follows with remaining funds invested temporarily at 7%. So company took a loan of 30 lakh on 1st April. The interest rate is 9% and they have started constructing two buildings. One is factory building and one is office building. right? And on 1st April, they have invested 5 lakh rupees into the construction of factory building and 10 lakh rupees into the construction of office building. So on 1st April 2001, they have spent 15 lakh rupees. Out of 30 lakh rupees, they have spent 15 lakh rupees. And the another 15 lakh rupees, they have or they are going to spend on 1st October 2001. So during this 6 months period, during this 6 months period, what they are doing they are idle fund, they are depositing this idle fund of 15 lakh rupees into a fixed deposit. And the rate of interest is 7%. The rate of interest is 7%. So friends, first of all, you need to compute, you need to compute your interest cost for full year in this case, right? Your interest cost for the year is 30 lakh multiplied by 9%, right? 30 lakh multiplied by 9%. And what is your 30 lakh multiplied by 9%? It is your 2 lakh 70 thousand. Then you need to compute your interest income, which is 15 lakh multiplied by 7% multiplied by 6 by 12. It will give you some amount, right? So you will reduce your interest income from interest cost. It will give you a net interest cost, which is going to be capital. You can see in this case, so in this case, the total cost for factory is 10 lakh. The total cost for office building is 20 lakh, right? Same. 
So what is the total borrowing cost for factory building? 10 lakh multiplied by 9%, 90,000. 20 lakh multiplied by 9%, 1 lakh, 80,000. The total is 2 lakh, 70,000. Less investment income. So as I told you, the remaining 15 lakh has been invested on 1st October. So the remaining 5 lakh on factory has invested on 1st October. Remaining 10 lakh for office building has invested on 1st October. So 5 lakh multiply by 7% multiply by 6 divide by 12. 10 lakh multiply by 7% multiply by 6 divide by 12. It gives us 17,535,000. So 90,000 minus 17,500 gives you 72,500, right? And 180 minus 35,000 gives you 1,45,000, right? So this is your net interest cost, which is going to be capitalized. Now, what is your cost of the asset? Your cost of the asset is actual expenditure plus borrowing cost. Your actual expenditure on factory is 10 lakh. On office is 20 lakh. Your net borrowing cost is 72,500 and 1 lakh 45,000. So 10 lakh 72,500 and 21 lakh 20, 45,000 is your, is your net, is your, is your cost of the asset, is your cost of asset, right? Is that clear, friends? Is that clear? Do you have any doubt? So how to measure? The borrowing cost in case of a specific borrowing. Is that clear? Very good. Very good. Now let's go to the next part which is general borrowing. What is a general borrowing? And let me tell you how it happens, how it works. Normally, the company or the big groups has a treasury department, right? For example, Reliance has a treasury department, okay? And normally these treasury department are at a corporate level. For example, Adani has a treasury department, Reliance has a treasury department, Bharti Airtel has a treasury department, Nestle has a treasury department. So these companies have a treasury department, okay, across the group, they have a treasury department. And normally what happens, treasury needs to procure the fund from the different sources. Treasury needs to procure the fund from different sources. Treasury needs to procure the friends, uh, funds from various, you know, various institutions, various sources like uh, from debentures, like from commercial papers, like from different banks, like from different NBFCs, okay? So, for example, the Treasury has taken, the Treasury has issued a debenture on the basis of 9%, okay? And they have raised a fund of 100 crores on 9% debenture. They have taken a term loan from Allahabad Bank for 8%, again 200 crores. They have taken a term loan from State Bank of India at 7.5% for let's say another 100 crores. They have taken a loan from uh, let's say uh, from NBFC, HDFC Limited at 8.5% uh, for 100 crores. So they created a pool of 500 crore from various sources. In this various sources, some borrowing pertains to 9%, some borrowing pertains to 8.5%, some borrowing pertains to 8%, some borrowing pertains to 7.5%. So they made a pool of 500 crores. Right? Now they have a fund of 500 crores. Now they, they have to spend this 500 crores on the various requirements. Right? So what they are doing, they are releasing some 50 crore on the working capital requirement on a day-to-day -day basis. They are releasing 100, 150 crores for construction of a factory at Delhi. They are releasing another 100 crore for construction of a plant at Gujarat, right? They are releasing another 50 crore for construction of a corporate office building. Can you see, they have created a pool this pool has a different borrowing. Now they have a 500 crores in a pool and they are using this 500 crore for various purposes, for various projects. Now friends, let's say you are the auditor of this company. You are checking your capitalization. You are checking the capitalization of Delhi factory, of your Gujarat factory, 
of your corporate office which is mumbai right and the working capital will you be able to identify that gujarat delhi and mumbai office so what is the borrowing which is used from which sources borrowing is used for these particular purposes will you be able to identify can you say with the confidence sir gujarat office building fund are those fund which has been procured from allahabad bank can you say with the confidence sir mumbai office building fund is the fund which is procured from the debenture can you can you say with the confidence answer is no you are not aware why because the fund has been suffered the fund has become a pool it is a pool of 500 crore which has lost the identity of the various sources now it is one pool one fund now out of this pool of fund now the money is getting allocated to the various sources now the question arise sir if we don't aware about that what source has been used to fund which project how can i calculate the borrowing cost because i'll not know about the rate i am not aware about whether it is 7.5% 8% 8.5% or 9% how can i capitalize the borrowing cost how can i reach at the number of borrowing cost friend standard says that not to worry in case of a general borrowings you have to apply a capitalization rate on the expenditure of the asset you have to apply a capitalization rate and what is the capitalization rate <clears throat> what is the capitalization rate the capitalization rate is the weighted average of the borrowing cost applicable to the general pool it is a weighted average of the borrowing cost applicable to the general pool right it is a weighted average of borrowing cost applicable to the general pool now question arises sir how do i need to calculate this weighted average cost how do i need to calculate the weighted average cost okay friends <coughs> i'll explain this with the help of the example and you need to come to me whenever you will able to see a uh, uh, file where i have explained the concept of, of the borrowing cost of the general pool right i hope you are able to see the excel file a limited on 1st april 2020 some loan right 4% debentures of rupees 10 lakh 6% term loan from state bank of india rupees 20 lakh then loan from alabad bank for rupees 10 lakh and they have raised the money from commercial paper as well for 10 lakh rupees all funds which they have procured from four different sources as a consortium they have they have sourced from a fund of 50 lakh rupees what is the interest what is the interest the interest is let's say lakh like multiplied by 50 right your lakh multiplied by 6% your lakh multiplied by 5% your Lakh multiplied by percent. Lakh eight thousand is your interest. What is your weighted average interest? Your weighted average interest is total interest divided by the pool of loan. Your weighted average interest rate is four point six percent. You can see that your few loans are sitting at two percent. Your few amount is sitting at four percent, but still your weighted average interest is coming out at four point six percent. Why? because your few amount of loan are also sitting at 5 and 6% right so that weighted average interest rate is 4.6% at which this company has done a borrowing right at which this company has done the borrowing i hope it is clear to all of you i hope it is clear the 
how to compute the capitalization rate how to compute the cap capitalization rate and now how to compute the borrowing cost on those various projects because those various project has started in a different part time and will complete in a different time frame as well okay one company has spent 25 lakh on construction of factory the company has spent rupees 25 lakh on construction of factory so out of this 50 lakh the company has only spent 25 lakh so of course you need to compute your weighted average borrowing cost you need to compute your borrowing cost only on this 25 lakh the remaining 25 lakh must have been used at different places okay so number 1 calculation of weighted average rate of interest we have calculated that in divided by total pool of loan which comes out at 4.6% comes out at 4.6 very simple now the second one you need to compute step number 2 you need to compute apply weighted average rate of interest to the amount in qualifying asset what is the amount spent in qualifying asset 25 lakh what is your weighted average rate of interest for this percent what is your borrowing cost to be capitalized 25 lakh multiply by 4.6 percent considering it is for full year right considering it is for full year so 25 lakh multiply by 4.6 percent are you able to understand how this borrowing cost is going to be measured in case of a general pool borrowing is that clear Friends, at least I need five confirmation. If you guys have read out, if you have not understood, you are not clear. I will again make you guys understand. I'll again explain this thing. But this is very, 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 very important. I would say. have received even 10 responses very good so let me again go back to my uh, presentation and uh, let's discuss one of the case study so this part we have discussed capitalization rate is the weighted average rate of the borrowing of the general pool so total interest cost divided by total borrowing will give you the capitalization rate let's discuss this case study beta limited had the following loans in place at the end of 31st march 2002 at the end of 31st march 2002 so at the beginning of the year they have a bank loan which is 18% this all the numbers are in thousands right so 1000 1000 loan 1000 1000 bank loan they have already there on 1st april and it is there on the 31st march as well so this 1000 loan was there in the beginning as well as the end means the company has taken the loan in the past and the company has not repaid this loan and the rate of interest is 18% the company is has the company has another loan outstanding in the beginning and at the end of the year for 3000000 and the rate of interest is 16% the company has 14% debenture okay and these debenture has been issued during the year because the opening it was not outstanding in the opening these have been issued at the in in during the year and that is why this 14% debenture is outstanding at the end of the year so the company has three kind of borrowings for 18% 16% and 14% right and the total pool of fund is 3 plus 1 plus 2 6000 60 lakh loan pool is there 14% debenture was issued to fund the construction of office building on 1st july 2001 but the development activities has yet to be started friends if you will see the question has given you the information that this debenture the money the proceeds from the debenture is used for the office building it means it is a case of a specific borrowing it is a case of specific borrowing right 
it is not a part of the general pool it is a case of the specific borrowing it is not a part of the general pool right so which is part of the general pool it means this 18% and 16% is a part of the general pool on 1st april 2001 beta limited began the production of a plant beta limited began the production of the plant right being a qualifying asset using the existing borrowings beta limited began the construction of a plant being qualifying asset using the existing borrowing existing borrowing means 3000 and 1000 this one right and when they have started the construction on 1st april 2001 expenditure drawn down for the construction was and 5 lakh rupees has been drawn on 1st april 2001 and 25 lakh rupees has been drawn on 1st january 2000 so 25 plus 5 30000 so already this 30 lakh rupees has been completed but how this 30 lakh rupee has been used the 30 lakh rupee has been used in two manner number 1 5 lakh rupee has been used on 1st april 25 lakh rupee has been used on 1st january right and we need to compute the borrowing cost here how to compute the borrowing cost number 1 you need to compute the weighted average weighted average cost of the borrowing you need to compute the capitalization rate you need to compute the capitalization rate. number 2 number 1 you need to compute the capitalization rate number 2 you need to compute the cost of the borrowing and cost of the borrowing has to be computed for the amount which has been used for the period of the construction right so let's solve this question step number 1 compute the capitalization rate how to compute the capitalization rate 18% into 1000 plus 16% into 3000 divide by 4000 sorry divide by 3000 so friends this is not right uh, this uh, sorry 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 your total loan was not your total loan was 4000 40 lakh and out of 40 lakh only 30 lakh has been used so far right Eighteen percent of one thousand and sixteen percent of three thousand. This will give you the total interest. Divide by total loan is forty lakh. It will give you a weighted average rate of sixteen point five percent. Right now, five lakh rupee has been used for full year because this expenditure has been incurred on first April. But this twenty five lakh rupee expenditure has been incurred on first January. So this has been used for three months, right? So five lakh multiply by sixteen point five percent for full year, twenty five lakh multiply by sixteen point five percent for three months into three by twelve. This will give you one lakh eighty five thousand six hundred twenty five. This is the borrowing cost which is going to be capitalized. This is the borrowing cost which is going to be capitalized. Right, friends? I hope you guys have understood. A uh, measurement in case of a specific borrowing, measurement in case of total borrowing. Let me know if you have any question. If you do have understood very clearly, then I'll move forward for the next concept. Shall I move forward to the next concept, guys? Shall I move forward to the next concept? Yeah. okay let's move on now there is a one concept which is given for the impairment as i have already told you for example you have constructed a plant and uh, the construction cost was let's say 1 crore rupees you have also capitalized the borrowing cost of 10 lakh rupees so what is the total cost 1.1 crore right eventually the recoverable amount of the plant has gone down it came down to 80 lakh rupees right so this interest cost is also going to be impaired so 1.1 minus 80 30 lakh will be your impairment loss right so this is what as a concept which is given in this standard friends if i talk about this borrowing cost standard you know how this standard flow first we talked about 
when a borrowing cost is going to be capitalized and we understood that the borrowing cost is going to be capitalized when it is directly related to acquisition construction and production of an asset answer is no of a qualifying asset the difference between a qualifying asset and an asset is a qualifying asset is a work in progress or a qualifying asset is an incomplete asset whereas an asset is a complete asset so borrowing cost which is directly related to acquisition construction and production of a qualifying asset is required to be capitalized right that is number 1 number 2 we have understood that the borrowing cost only includes cost of debt it does not include cost of equity number 3 we have understood that the borrowing cost is also going to be capitalized on inventories if that inventory is not manufactured in a large quantity and on a repetitive basis okay and yes those inventory will take a substantial period of time for getting ready for intended use or sale and please remember the example of aircraft which is manufactured by boeing or which is manufactured by airbus number 4 now what is the borrowing cost the borrowing cost are interest and ancillary cost which is going to be measured on effective interest rate basis h per india is 109 sir is there anything which is going to be capitalized as a borrowing cost yes if the company is using any lease liability the company is using any lease asset and creating a lease liability the interest on lease liability will also form part of the borrowing and if the company has taken a foreign currency loan then whatever the company is saving to that extent if the company would have taken in indian currency and now the company is taking a foreign currency loan whatever saving is there to the extent of the saving the company can capitalize the exchange rate loss right friends this is what we understood about borrowing cost then we understood the borrowing cost is going to be capitalized as an asset as a part of the asset when two condition will be satisfied number 1 future economic benefit is probable number 2 cost can be measured reliably number 3 the borrowing cost is going to be measured in two different manner if it is a specific borrowing life is very simple whatever amount you have incurred on that borrowing that has to be capitalized to that asset right and if you have incurred some income out of the ideal out of the ideal funds you will reduce that interest income from the interest cost from the borrowing cost and you will do the net capitalization okay so this is your this is your borrowing this is a case of specific borrowing coming to the general borrowing if borrowing is part of a general pool if borrowing is part of a general pool right in that case you need to compute the capitalization rate what is the capitalization rate capitalization rate is equal to total interest cost divided by total pool of borrowings it will give you a weighted average rate right then you need to apply that weighted average rate to the amount incurred on the various projects or amount incurred on the various qualifying asset this will give you the borrowing cost which is going to be capitalized so so far we have understood these three four important concept now we are going to understood what is the starting point of capitalization of the borrowing cost when the borrowing cost is going to be capitalized sir why we are asking this question if we have taken the borrowing we will capitalize the borrowing cost so now i'll ask one question you have taken a loan you have raised a fund from the loan let's say you have taken a term loan at the rate of 10% from state bank of india for 100 crores the money is lying in your bank account idle lying in your bank account why you have taken this loan for the construction of a factory so you want to have this loan for purchase of a land then construction of a factory so you were supposed to purchase that land but the deal got cancelled or let the deal got delayed right so what you will do will you capitalize this interest cost you don't have any asset you have not started any construction activity you don't have any asset you don't have land so will you capitalize this interest cost at this point of time you have taken a loan you have a interest will you capitalize this interest cost me yes or no 
him yes or no Tisha tell me yes or no Pooja what's your view I got three responses which says no very good why you have said no Sir Rahul has responded Sir since the asset is not there the underlying asset is not there so on on which asset we should capitalize the borrowing cost is not a separate asset the borrowing cost has to be capitalized as a cost of the underlying asset in this case underlying asset is not there right the land has not purchased so far so in this case it will go to p and l and hence it is important to understand when borrowing cost is going to be capitalized what is the starting point for the capitalization of the borrowing cost what is the starting point for the capitalization of the borrowing cost and it is known as a commencement of capitalization it is known as the commencement of capitalization right and it says that Start is start using borrowing cost of qualifying asset on the commencement date. So, what is the starting point for capitalization of the borrowing cost? The commencement date is the starting point of the capitalization of the borrowing cost. Sir, what is commencement date? Which date is considered as a commencement date? The commencement date for capitalization is the date when entity meets the following conditions. The commencement date is the date when three conditions will be satisfied. Number one, borrowing cost is incurred. The company has taken a loan and the borrowing has already been incurred. The borrowing cost has already been started. Number two, expenditure for the asset is incurred. The company for the construction of the factory, the company has already purchased the land. Number three, activities which are necessary to prepare the asset for its intended use or sale are started the company has already started getting the excavation started the excavation the company has already raised the the, the sanction of the map the company has already applied for sanctioning the map of that that construction okay the company has already started obtaining the licenses for the construction so friends activities which are necessary to prepare the asset for its intended use or sale has already been started so now again to make you guys understand what is the commencement date i'll give you three examples i'll give you one example for the three different dates number one the company has taken a loan from state bank of india on 1st april 2022 for 20 crores that is 1st april 2022 on which the borrowing is incurred number 2 the company has purchased a land for construction purposes on 1st july 2022 so this is the date 1st july 22 the company has purchased the land number 3 the company has started you know the company has started or the company has put the application for sanctioning of the map and the company has started excavation on 1st september 2022 so the company has started the activities which are required to prepare this asset for its intended use or sale so that is on 1st september 2022 so loan has been taken on 1st april the land has been purchased on 1st July and this activity, the technical activity or even administrative activity has been started on 1st September. What will be the commencement date from which this capitalization of the borrowing cost will start? You need to tell me. What is the commencement date? Is I am waiting for the answer. What is the commencement date? I am waiting for the answer. Abhis is saying 1st September, Mufita is saying 1st September, right? Ridvik is saying 1st September. Sonali is saying 1st July. Sonali, why 1st July? On 1st July, only two conditions are satisfied, not all the three conditions. On 1st July, 
the borrowing has already been incurred which was already on 1st april and the land has already been purchased but the activity has not been started so the two condition has been satisfied third condition has not been satisfied july is not the commencement date first september is the commencement date right first september is the commencement date okay is that clear sonali is that clear so first september is a date when all three conditions have been satisfied sir whether this activity means a construction activity answer is no even this activity also includes your technical and marketing related technical and administrative related activity as well right for example the company started doing fencing the company has started applying for the licenses and sanctioning of the map right it is also considered as a activity okay clear is that clear you have to it is a common date where all three conditions have been satisfied commencement date example from ici study material you need to answer me quickly what is the commencement date X Limited is commencing a new construction project, which is to be financed by borrowing. The key dates are as follows: fifteenth May two thousand one. Loan interest relating to the project start to be incurred. The borrowing has been in, the borrowing has been done, and the borrowing cost started incurred. Second June technical site planning started. Nineteen June expenditure on the project started to be incurred. Eighteen July construction work started. Identify the commencement date. friends 15th may borrowing has been incurred 19 june expenditure has been incurred you need to tell me this 2nd june or 18 july which date needs to be considered for activity which has already been started to prepare the asset ready for intended use or sale tell me tell me date Tell me what is the date? Sada M is saying nineteen. What about others? What about others? You remember just couple of seconds or couple of minutes before I have told you activity does not mean only construction activity. Activity means the technical and administrative activity as well. For example. for example you have hired a architect who is drawing your map right you are doing a technical planning you have applied for the licenses we consider as an activity okay in this case you all are right 19 june is the date from where where the from where this from where this borrowing cost needs to be capitalized from where the borrowing cost capitalization should be started from where the borrowing cost capitalization should start sir the company has taken a loan on 15th may you are saying borrowing cost needs to be capitalized from 19 june sir what about the interest cost which has been incurred from 15th may to 18 june where this interest cost will go where this interest cost will go it will go to pnl right it will not be capitalized it will go to pnl is that clear is it clear this is the solution for this example in the above case the three condition to be tested for commencement date would be borrowing cost 15th may expenditure incurred 19 june activity started 2nd june so commencement date would be the date when the above three condition would be satisfied in all that is 19 june when i talk about that the borrowing cost has been started sir is there any chance where the borrowing cost will be suspended where the borrowing cost will be postponed during the construction phase answer is yes and that is known as a postponement or suspension of capitalization for example when the covid came right so there were lot of construction which were going on a company was constructing a factory 
or the company was constructing a bridge or dam let's say when this covid came there was a national lockdown and the construction activity got stuck for 3 months the construction activity got stopped for 3 months right now the question arises sir when this in in this 3 month when the active development was not there no any qualifying asset was developed whether in this 3 month the interest cost is going to be capitalized standard says that capitalization of the borrowing cost shall be suspended during extended period in which it suspends the active development of a qualifying asset standard says that if the active development of a qualifying asset has not been happening it has been deferred postponed in that case the capitalization of the borrowing cost should also be postponed should also be postponed second example a company was constructing a bridge right so government has put a stay the government has changed earlier it was let's say congress government now it comes as a bjp government so after winning the election bjp bjp government has put a stay that don't construct this bridge right and we will allow you after hearing from you properly after looking at the total cost after looking at the project plan after looking at the benefits right only then we will allow you to continue the construction on this bridge due to this condition the active development of this qualifying asset which is like a bridge has been stopped has been stopped so during the period of this suspension of the active development of a qualifying asset the borrowing cost is also the borrowing cost will also be suspended in this extended period where the active development of the qualifying asset got suspended is it clear is it clear right clear thing okay entity also does not suspend borrowing cost capitalization when a temporary delay is a necessary part of the process of getting an asset ready for intended use or sale for example so friends the example which i have given you it was unexpected example it was unexpected situation like covid was a unexpected situation like the government has changed and the new government has stopped the work of the previous government so again it is a un unexpected condition unexpected situation but friends if today you are going to construct a long term asset you are going to construct a asset right you are going to construct an asset and so you are going to construct an asset and whatever what happened and what happening you are aware on the day one that in the location where i am constructing the asset there was there were some times there was some period where the active development will be hampered right for example you are constructing a bridge in maisaram or chera punji in meghale and you know that during 2 to 3 months there was a heavy rainfall although the rainfall will be there throughout the year but there were 2 3 months where there were heavy rainfall right and during those 2 3 months we will not be able to continue the construction you are aware that when i am constructing in meghale when i am when i am constructing a bridge in meghale if i am constructing a bridge in delhi it will take one year but the same bridge for the same kilometers if i'll go and construct in meghale it will take two years so this this temporary delay is a necessary part of the process right this is a temporary part of the process if i'll, I'll not stop my production if i'll not stop my construction during that heavy rainfall period probably i will incur a huge amount of losses so friends in that case if the temporary delay is a necessary part of the process in that case the borrowing cost will not be postponed like in this example during the heavy rainfall period the borrowing cost should not be postponed right for example capitalization continues during the extended period of that high water level delay construction of a bridge if such high water levels are common during the construction period in the geographical region involved right so friends 
Is that clear? If this temporary delay is also anticipated, it is it is all it is already a part of the process. In that case, this borrowing costs capitalization will be suspended. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If the temporary delay is part of the process, it is anticipated, then the borrowing cost will not be suspended. It has to be capitalized. But if the temporary delay is not a part of the process, it is not anticipated. In that case, the borrowing cost has to be suspended, postponed. Where it will go? Like in COVID period, all the borrowing cost has gone to the PNL, right? It has gone to the PNL. And when the development will start again from the date of the development will start, it will again start at capitalizing. This commencement of capitalization and suspension of capitalization is also complete. Now the third concept, sir, we have started capitalizing. In between, we have understood if the active development will be interrupted, it will be suspended. We will also suspend the capitalization. We will not suspend the capitalization if it is already anticipated, if it is already factored, right? Number three is stopping the capitalization, cessation of capitalization, right? That is number three, cessation of capitalization. Sir, what is meant by cessation of capitalization? You have started capitalization, commenced capitalization, you have suspended capitalization. Now, when will you stop capitalization? You remember when I have started the session in the first half an hour, I'll take an I, I, had ta I, I have taken an example that the loan has been taken for five years, right? But the construction has been completed in the first two years, right? So loan has been taken for five years. The construction has been completed in two years. So question number one. What is the period on which the interest expense has to be there? What is the period on which the interest obligation is there? For which amount of period you will pay the interest? That is question number one. My question is not on capitalization. My question is on obligation of interest payments. You are right, five years. You are right, five years. You have to pay, you have to pay interest during the tenure of the loan. Now my second question is, for what period you will capitalize the interest? Is it for the full five year or is it for the first two year, which is the construction period? Yes, what is the, what is the answer to it? Question number two. Question number one answer, you are right. You are right, Ravish. It is for two years. The interest is going to be capitalized for the first two years. The remaining three year interest has to be expensed off in the PNL, expensed off into, into the profit and loss account. Is that clear? So, standard says that the borrowing cost capitalization will be seized, it will be stopped when substantially all the activities necessary to prepare the qualifying asset for its intended use or sale are complete. It says that the borrowing cost capitalization should be stopped when the construction of the asset is substantially complete. Substantially complete means when all the activities are substantially complete, which is important to prepare the asset for its intended use or sale. How many of you have gone to school? Probably this is not a right question. Everyone has gone to school, right? Everyone has gone to school. Am I right? Friends, have you seen that in case of a construction of a new school building, generally what happens, the paint on the outside walls was going on and the, and the classes has already been started. The whiteboard is there, the furniture is there, the fence were there, right? And inside the class, the dent paint has already been completed. The paint and polish has completed. On the outside walls, the boundary walls, the paint was going on. The horticulture activity was going on. 
and the classes has already been started right the classroom has been started the the entity the school is using the institute is using that building for the purpose of uh, for the purpose of teaching to the students right have you seen that anyone who is working in office have you seen that the office has already been started the people have started working and the small things are 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 going on the renovation is going on the small things are going on in the office in your practical life have you seen that just due to the inauguration you have to do the inauguration of your house in diwali right so you have inaugurated the house you have done the house warming puja and you have entered into your house you have started living and the small furniture work is going on right <coughs> so friends this three example which i have taken what does these three example says this three example says that the school building that office building your house these three assets have been substantially completed right for the intended use or sale more than 90% it has been completed so that it can be used right and hence up to this date the borrowing cost needs to be stopped the capitalization of borrowing cost needs to be stopped generally what happens when the company's got the occupancy certificate oc right till the date of occupancy certificate they are capitalizing the borrowing cost and after the occupancy certificate date they are charging the borrowing cost to the pnl is that clear are you able to connect with my lemon language examples are you able to come com are, are you able to connect with this small examples in your real life pooja tanisha are you able to connect that yeah very good friends what is your understanding on this standard so far what is your understanding i have used numericals i have used lemon examples i have used theory i have used ppt and even i have also revised in between recapped in between so have you understood this entire standard so far very good now the second part what standard says so this part we have understood sir if the asset is substantially completed then borrowing cost capitalization should stop there now what happens you must have seen a bigger size you must have seen for example this is a bigger project where there are three buildings the building number 1 it is a residential building building number 2 it is a commercial building right used for the office purposes building number 3 it is let's say theater it is theater it is cinema hall it is theater residence commercial and theater these three buildings which is having a different usage right this three building are part of a project you must have seen these builders are you know these builders are giving these builders are you know constructing commercial phase residence residential phase in 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 one project itself they have a different uses different things so friends when an entity complete the construction of a qualifying asset in part so this entire project is a qualifying asset but there are three part of this qualifying asset probably the commercial building has started construction this theater has started constructing but this residential building has completed and people have started living in this residential building right so that could be a situation so when an entity complete the construction of a qualifying asset in part and each part is capable of being used while construction continues on other part because this residential has nothing to do with its commercial and theater at because this residential building is used for is used for living purposes residence purposes right so if each part is capable of being used while the construction is going on other parts in that case the company has to stop capitalization of the borrowing cost on the part which has substantially completed and on other part the company will will start capitalizing the borrowing cost on a pro rata basis is that clear 
so this is what is given in this concept this is what which is given in india 23 is that clear is that clear yeah okay let's do this question from icai study material right so we have covered the commencement of capitalization we have covered the suspension which is deferment which is postponement of the capitalization and we have covered the the stopping the capitalization which is cessation of capitalization x limited has a treasury department that arranges funds for all the requirements of the company including funds for working capital and expansion programs during the year ended 31st march the company commenced the construction of a qualifying asset and incurred the following expenses right and incurred the following expenses so what does it say it has a treasury department which arranges funds for all the requirements right they have they are arranging funds for day to day requirement as well as capex requirement during the year ended they have started constructing a qualifying asset and incurred the following expenses 2.5 lakh on 1st july and on 1st december it is two th on 1st december it is 3 lakh the detail of the borrowing and interest thereon are as under long term loan at the rate of 10% the average balance is 10 lakh rupees and the interest is 1 lakh rupees the working capital loan is 5 lakh rupees and uh, the interest is 65000 the total loan is 15 lakh rupees and uh, this interest is 1 lakh 65000 rupees compute the borrowing cost which is going to be capitalized friends is it a question of specific borrowing or is it a question of general pool is it a question of specific borrowing or is it a question of general pool what does it mean the company has taken two loans long term loan and working capital loan right so what is the total interest total interest is 1 lakh 65000 the total pool of loan is 15 lakh now the first step you remember step number 1 in case of general pool compute the capitalization rate the capitalization rate is equal to weighted average rate weighted average rate is equal to total interest divided by total pool of loan so 1 lakh 65000 divided by 15000 comes out at 11% so your capitalization rate is 11% now where, now the amount which you have spent right the tenure for which you have spent the amount you have to you have to compute the borrowing cost for those period those tenure so this 2 lakh 50000 this amount has been spent on 1st july it means First July to first March. First July to thirty first March is comes out at nine months, right? So two lakh fifty thousand multiply by eleven percent, multiply by nine by twelve gives us twenty thousand. And this other two lakh is for on first December means it is for four months. Two lakh multiply by eleven percent, multiply by four, divide by twelve comes out at eleven thousand. So your thirty one thousand six hundred and twenty five. this total of 31625 will be capitalized as a borrowing cost will be capitalized as a borrowing cost right is it right are you all okay good now let's come to the last part which is disclosure very simple disclosure amount of borrowing cost capitalized during the period needs to be disclosed and the capitalization rate which is used right first of all you have the total borrowing cost of let's say 1000 crore out of 1000 crore you have capitalized 300 crore so what is the amount of borrowing cost which you have capitalized right because what happens in the pnl only 700 crore will be there in the balance sheet this borrowing cost will form part of capital work in progress so how the user will be able to understand this civip how much part of the borrowing cost is a part of the civip right and that is why amount of borrowing cost capitalized during the period has to be disclosed right and what what capitalization rate you have used in case of a weighted average capitalization 
or in case of a specific borrowing, what capitalization rate you have used is also going to be disclosed. Coming to the difference between INDAS and IFRS, there is no difference as such. But yes, between AS and INDAS, there is a difference. And what is the difference? Of course, in IFRS and INDAS, the standard is uh, IAS 23 or INDAS 23. In AS, it is AS 16. There is some scope exclusion which is given in INDAS, like your biological asset and inventories which are manufactured in large quantity on a repetitive basis. But such a specific exemption is not given in accounting standard. Substantial period of time is defined in accounting standard, which is 12 months. But substantial period of time is not explained in INDAS. You can take a substantial period of time of 12 months generally. Companies are making a policy. Few companies are saying more than 6 months is substantial. Few are saying more than 3 months is substantial. Some are saying more than 12 months are substantial, right? Effective interest rate. There is no concept of effective interest rate in IGAP in accounting standard. But in INDAS, the concept is effective interest rate. Disclosure of capitalization rate is not required in, in IGAP. But yes, capitalization rate is going to be disclosed in INDAS or IFRS. So these are the small differences between AS 16 and in day 23, right? Let's quickly recap. So in, in this standard, we have understood that how to identify the borrowing, borrowing costs are those costs which are directly related to the acquisition, construction and production of qualifying asset. Borrowing costs are interest and the ancillary costs like transaction cost, processing fee. It has to be calculated on effective interest rate basis, right? Number two, interest on lease liability is also form part of borrowing cost. Number three, your exchange rate fluctuation is also form part of borrowing cost. Subject to the, subject to it will be not more than the savings of the interest. Number two, identify qualifying asset. What is qualifying asset? Which takes a substantial period of time for getting ready for intended use or sale as per the management. Okay. Recognition condition is as simple as for every asset condition like you will capitalize borrowing cost if if it is if it is what you will capitalize borrowing cost uh, number one if the future economic benefit is probable number two cost can be measured reliably right if a specific borrowing you need to calculate actual cost less temporary income to calculate the weighted average rate right you need to Capitalize borrowing cost to the quality. Okay. Then we have learned three concepts. Commencement of capitalization, you will start capitalizing your borrowing cost. When three conditions will be satisfied, borrowing has been incurred, expenditure on asset has been incurred, and activity start to prepare the asset for the intended use or sale has been started. You will suspend or defer the capitalization of the borrowing cost if your active development of the qualifying asset is suspended right but if this temporary delay is part of the process in that case you will not postpone the capitalization of borrowing cost you will stop capitalizing the borrowing cost if substantially the qualifying asset is complete for the intended use or sale this is your favorite slide thank you so much friends and i have covered this in day 16 uh, sorry a, not in day 16 in day 23 which is counterpart of AS23 in detail. Please let me know if you want to cover any person, any part, any concept of interest completely again. Please let me know if you have not understood any part of the standard. We will be happy to explain it again. So I'll wait for uh, the next 30 seconds. If you have any question, please let me know. If you don't have any question, then I would like to conclude the session. Let me know, friends. Any question, please let me know. Yeah. Rahul, you are right. Effective interest rate has to be calculated as per the net inflow versus net outflow, total outflow versus net inflow will give you the effective interest rate. Right? Technically, the processing fees would not have been incurred if you would not have taken the loan. So technically, processing fee is also a cost of borrowing. Processing fee is also interest. Right? Yeah. Okay. 
so thank you friends i got so many responses right and uh, largely the people are saying are able to understand it very well thank you so much stay safe stay happy friends and stay learning in days i would recommend please solve all the practical problems from ic ai study material go through with the study material read the concept revise the concept and solve all the practical problems right thank you so much guys